happy homecoming. And uh, a homecoming that is a lot more happy than it maybe was at the end of the third quarter as the Missouri Tigers behind a heroic comeback led by Brady Cook uh, and the defense um, take over the Auburn Tigers 21 to 17 after being down 17 to three early in the third quarter. Um, a game that the Missouri team was tested and they had a lot of trials and tribulations to overcome throughout this game that it's safe to say that they did. Um, Q, uh, just hey. gonna you know throw it over to you. Um, obviously, yeah, I'm a Dean Rao. This is Quentin Corpuel. You know, game is so crazy. We didn't even have introductions. But uh, what do you have to say about that performance? What do you think stood out to you the most from this team in that game? The resilience, absolutely the resilience. There were so many times where Mizzou could have folded, and Auburn would have walked out of here with a homecoming win. Uh, it was a Mizzou homecoming win. Uh, that would have been the first homecoming loss since Middle Tennessee back in 2016. And Mizzou didn't let that happen numerous times, led by Brady Cook, who returned to the game after sustaining an ankle injury. Earlier in the first quarter, it was a hip drop tackle uh, that he was a victim of. And it was really, really enlightening to hear his journey uh, from Faro to University Hospital, uh, a few blocks away from Faro, back to Stevens Indoor Practice Facility where he tested his ankle. And then coming back out of the tunnel, I don't wanna say Willis Reed style because that's a very, very sacred moment in basketball history that is almost impossible to compare anything to. But that was his Willis Reed moment where he came out of the tunnel. Reports were that he probably wasn't gonna come back. He yep. even said it himself. He, he didn't think he was gonna come back to play at any point today. Uh, and yet there was number 12 walking out of the tunnel ready to lead his team valiantly down the field to which he did. Uh, that last drive, 17 plays. 95 yards, a humongous fourth and five completion to Luther Burden, who hadn't really gotten going. Uh, like through the first half, his first target came with 92 seconds left in the first half. And Coach Frank was saying after the game that Luther Burden's a, a this play type player. He's able to put any, any wrongs, any negatives in the past. And him and Brady Cook connected on arguably the biggest play of the season up to this point because if they don't connect teams effectively over Mizzou only had one timeout um and so <clears throat> this comeback saved Mizzou's playoff hopes they're yeah. now six and one heading into Tuscaloosa uh, the the magnitude of this win of this comeback again down 17 to 3 cannot be overstated absolutely not um and another thing that to to allude to on that drive uh three for four on third down and one for one on fourth down to really erase that, uh, the one third down that didn't convert. I think the really, the biggest thing, the two things that I'm looking at on that drive that were so impressive to me was that A, on practically one leg and just a whole lot of adrenaline and whatever else it was that Brady Cook couldn't tell us, um, uh, he span out of the pocket and created separation to get a huge 14 yard rush on third and seven. In, in their own side of the field, where honestly, you could have argued that at that point with three timeouts and they don't get that, they probably punt the ball. And, and they probably punt the ball, and who knows what Auburn does with a chance to steal the game. Um, and then even in his own end zone on second and 10, gets a nine-yard rush to create a way more manageable third down. I mean, the fact that not only did he come back, but he came back and made plays with his legs, even though the pain he was in with his ankle is absolutely astonishing to me. Additionally, to add on to that, first and 10 teams at on the other side of the field with the, on the Auburn side of the field, huge sack, you know, second and 18. You could see a lot of teams come from that situation and, uh, you know, roll over, bow their heads down. Nope, this team said, this play, menta this play mentality, you know, let's just get, get it going on this play. And, 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 and Cook connected with his most reliable guy. And a uh, big shout out to Jamal Roberts as well at the end, fighting through two last carries, really. You know, everyone's looking at Brady to see, is he gonna finish this off? And then, you know, overlooked kid from STL just comes in and just absolutely powers his way to the end zone. But 
obviously we could talk about the the emotional aspects of the game. Obviously, Durant was emotional at the press conference, but let's let's talk about the actual logistics of the game itself. Quentin, talk to me about the defense. What you saw from the defense today, because they were a big reason why something like this was even possible in the fourth quarter. Yeah, other than the play where Cam Coleman got by Drayden Norwood and Marvin Burks, uh, the latter of whom had his eyes. In the backfield, that's been a, a problem for a lot of teams I've seen across college football. That's always been a problem. Um, but especially for Mizzou this year, they've gotten their eyes caught in the backfield a handful of times. We saw it a lot against Boston College. Uh, that was a big one. Um, and it happened again. Camp Coleman, 47-yard touchdown. A beautiful throw from Peyton Thorne as well. Really, really nice throw. But outside of that, the defense stepped up. They came to play. They generated consistent pressure on Peyton Thorne. Um, they forced a turnover. That was less than three minutes after the botched handoff between Drew Pine, mm -hmm. who we'll talk about in They almost did shortly. it twice. Um, they forced a Peyton Thorne th fumble after it looked like, as you said, Dean, Jark West Hunter fumbled the ball. Yeah. Got lucky that his ass was down before <laughs> the ball came out. Right. Uh, but sure enough, a few plays later, uh, they were able to come up with a fumble recovery. Uh, it was Toriano Pride Jr. who scooped up the loose yeah. pigskin. Um, but yeah, defense absolutely came to play. Um, yeah. I mean, there were a handful of, of chunk plays, but it was nothing serious outside of the 47-yard touchdown. Jarquez Hunter was held at just 57 yards on 19 carries. I was really curious to see how Mizzou's defensive line would hold up against probably the second best offensive line it will have played so far this season yeah. behind Texas A&M who manhandled them. I right. Mean, they, they had their way. Didn't look them. like they belonged on the same field. The, the entire game. And Auburn looked like the inferior team in that regard. Um, and now Jarquez Hunter did break, did break a few tackles. Um, that was another thing I was curious to see. Jarquez Hunter uh, registered per PFF 30 missed tackles forced entering today. Oh, I thought you were going to say this game. My goodness. Oh, oh my goodness. No, that's more, that's more of Ashton Genty territory. Ashton Genty <laughs> entering today with 56 missed tackles for so far this season. Yeah. 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 Jesus. Ashton Genty's been pretty good. Wow. Um, but Mizzou was able to stop the run and Auburn wasn't able to create enough over the air uh, to put him over the top. And then after the Jamal Roberts touchdown, Mizzou did a great job of, of shutting down any remnants of a late game comeback. Yeah, and, and just to add on with the defense, I thought a few guys that I thought, you know, even not even mentioned in the post-game pressers, Zion Young. Zion Young uh, opened the game with the sack on the first offensive play for Auburn. He really said, I'm here. I'm, I'm here to play right now. Uh, went down to an injury at some point in the middle of the game, still came back, and, and was disruptive in the backfield. Felt like he was in the backfield a lot throughout the game. Uh, and then Eddie Kelly. Uh, one play right before the crucial missed field goal that Drake alluded to that was huge for this game. Uh, Eddie Kelly absolutely bulldozed Jarquez Hunter in pass protection and made sure that Peyton Thorne wasn't thinking about throwing it anywhere except the sideline um, down in, in the middle of the third quarter there. And um, just as a whole, one thing that I love to see from the defense, I was talking in the prior to the game, Keandre Lambert-Smith versus whoever it is that's going to be covering him it's one of the best wideouts in the SEC, and they have one of the best wideout rooms in the SEC. It's just overlooked because of the quarterback position, they've had so much change. And I didn't, uh, aside from the first quarter, really, I didn't hear much from Keandre Lambert Smith. He was targeted a lot early, and there was a lot of negative plays or just non plays when he was targeted. So big props to Jaden Norwood, big props to Troy Pride, big props to Nick Deloach. Um, and big props to the safeties, aside from that one play in, co in coverage. It was just a clinic in coverage today. Um, and, you know, ten, only 10 points allowed on defense because obviously seven of the points come from the, the muff punt from Luther. That was just one of those situations where he's really athletic as a, as a special teamer, but uh, he gets kind of criticized with his decision-making in those situations where he's inside his own 10-yard line. Um, and uh, just a little bit of a bobble with the ball there that was kind of unfortunate and led to a, to a touchdown. But... Uh, Made sure to correct that later in the game as he took the fair catch around the same spot. But th this team, the defense responded in such a way. Quentin, talk to me about what did you see from the team while Drew Pine was out there? You know, what what do you think changed in the offense when when he went out there? And obviously Nate Noel was also out 
because he had a first quarter ding as well. And Brett Norfleet had to exit the game. And, and yeah, there's uh, no tight end there either. Looked like uh, re-aggravated his shoulder injury. But in regards to Drew Pine, the ship didn't sink, but it was fighting for its life. Um, there were a few throws that I thought were really good, especially in the face of pressure. Like, he was taking really big hits. Really big hits, uh, especially in the pocket. He was able to complete some of those passes. Um, but those intermediate to deep passes were not even just off, way off. Um, they weren't even close to the receiver's catch radius most of the time. Um, and so it, it wasn't the best outing for Drew Pine. He had already proven that he could he could keep Mizzou's offense afloat uh, in his three appearances before Saturday. But today, obviously, the stakes were beyond high. The other three times he entered the game, the game was, was already decided. Yeah. That's some. Um, Few Mass Murray State in Buffalo. So uh, I think especially with Brady Cook's injury history, uh, again, considering uh, his, his toughness, especially today, where, I mean, he had a noticeable hobble heading into the press conference and didn't think he was going to come back today, but still did, um, even though his toughness is is pretty elite. Um, we had uh, we got an appetizer of what it would look like in a big time scenario if if Drew Pine were to be called on, and I wouldn't say the returns were great. Uh, that's better than it's better than bad. Certainly wasn't bad. Um, bad is when Hank Brown came in for Peyton Thorne. <laughs> And played like he did. That's bad. Or or Gaston Moore today coming in for Nico Yamaleva and, and and throwing an interception on the first drop back. Like we know what bad looks like. And he didn't turn the ball over, which really would have lost this team the game. Aside outside, from the, outside of the fumble. Outside yes. of the fumble. Did not throw an interception, although he did sort of put the ball in harm's way. Nevertheless, the I think the lesson is this. Um, Mizzou can get by against decent teams with Pine as quarterback, but as we saw late in the game, Brady Cook is certainly a, a difference maker. The gap between him and Pine in terms of game-changing ability I, is <laughs> is pretty high. It's bigger than the screen. Yeah. Um, and, and the one thing that I wanted to touch on with Pine that I thought he really struggled with uh, that I um, probably mentioned in my sidebar about him that's coming out tomorrow is really, or I guess this release is tomorrow too, so around the same time as this is coming out, um, I think it's just the sideline throws, you know, quick throws to the sideline that are, you know, to an open man, try to get him some yards after a catch for a quick gain on first down. Plays that Brady Cook pretty regularly makes, um, aside from a few times this season. Biden didn't look like he had any chance on those plays. They, they, they would sail so far, like as you said, out of the catch rate at the receiver that they didn't even just look at the ball and wouldn't even think about trying to catch it. Um, he missed that kind of throw maybe two, three times today. And, yeah, I would say the offensive line kind of looked flustered without Brady back there. You know, I think that definitely impacted them uh, because I, I was noticing a lot of separation in the run, even in the run game that went away uh, after losing the quarterback. Obviously, defensive mentality with a backup in the game changes for Auburn. They're more hungry in that scenario because, of like, well, we know that they're not prepared for something like this as much as, you know, we are. Um and they uh, they pounced the I think the yards per carry up until Brady Cook got in the game was like two point one adjusted for sack yardage, um, and then that just shut up and the running game kind of came back. But there was actually one last uh, one last thing I want to touch on is there was one last drive with Pine. Okay, he had come in, the guy the poor guy was going to five drives with all the negative EPAs, pretty much nothing going for the team at that at that point. And they strung up a drive that at least put some points on the board. And a lot of people probably won't talk about that drive. But it was huge in the grand scheme of the game. Yeah, again, he can keep he can keep the offense afloat. He has he proven did. that and multiple times, including today. Yes, and um, this will probably shut up all the people that have been saying, that, oh, I want to take out Brady. I, I better not see that on my, on my TL ever again. Like, seriously. Um, if I see that on my TL, I'm gonna actually lose it because okay. that man that man proved today that not only does he can he play for this football team, but he is a Missouri Tiger and he, he loves this team. Most quarterbacks fold. Yeah. Most quarterbacks fold in that situation, and Cook had multiple opportunities to do so, and like so many instances, especially last year, he didn't. And Mizzou has won another game because of it. Yeah. So, really, that's all we got for today. Uh, we will be at Alabama next week. Um, should be a fun one. 
Uh, will the Tigers be the SEC champions of Alabama, the state of Alabama? We will find out. Um, obviously, just a great day for Mizzou fans to sit back and watch the rest of college football yeah. knowing that their team has a W <laughs> next to the name. Homecoming was saved. Homecoming was saved. And, um, yeah, that's really all we got for today. Uh, I'm Dean Rao. This is Quentin Corpuel from uh, Rock and Reacts. Make sure to go check out our forums on Rock and Plus. And uh, we are signing off. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Rock M Radio, a proud partner of Fans First Sports Network. Rock M Radio is the official podcast network of Rock M Plus, a new and exciting subscription service provided by me and the other voices of Rock M Radio. Please take a few moments to head over to rockm.plus and sign up for an account today. The cost is only $5 a month, and the benefits include access to our live podcast a subscriber-only message board, weekly newsletters, and more. If you enjoyed this episode of Rock M Radio and would like to see more Just Like It beamed directly into your personal device, make sure to click the subscribe button below and tell your friends. Our podcast feed is available through the Apple Podcast app for iPhone, Google Podcast app for Android, whatever app you listen to your podcast, you can also find Rock M Radio on Spotify. If you're looking for a podcast about your favorite team that is not Missouri Tigers, Fan First Sports Network is your answer. A full podcast network loaded with the team-specific podcasts covering Major League Baseball, the NFL, NHL, NBA, MLS, and more. And we'll be back with more episodes of Rock and Radio coming to you soon.